Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the action, comedy, crime and drama movie titled, Tower Heist. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A man called Josh works as the building manager of a skyscraper in New York City called The Tower. On his way to work, he walks into a black man called Slide who says he'll whoop his ass if he doesn't start walking on the other side of the street. One of the tenants in The Tower is Arthur Shaw, a billionaire who has amassed his fortune on Wall Street, and who lives in the building's penthouse. Today, the doorman Lester walks Arthur to his car just as Josh arrives, opening his door for him. Arthur says he's trying to start a hotel, and likes him and Lester so much he might steal them for his business. As Josh gets ready for work, the building's general manager Mr. Simon tells Josh he's not seen Charlie in the concierge desk, saying he better be there in three minutes. Moments later, Josh bumps into a woman called Odessa who'll need his help later. He then tells a woman called Miss Lovanko he knows she's studying for the bar exam, but asks her to study on lunch break instead. He suddenly hears a phone buzzing, and a guy says he's sorry. Mr. Simon says Enrique is their new elevator operator, asking Josh to give him a shot. Josh tells him the average apartment here costs $5.6 million, that they have the best views in New York, with top-notch security, and that their job is to give the tenants their full and undivided attention 24-7, so no phones. Josh also adds that they take no tips at the tower, with no exceptions. A man asks to get a car, and Josh says it's already done. Enrique remarks that that man's daughter looked like a prostitute, and Josh tells him he also needs to be discreet. Charlie arrives 20 minutes late, and Josh tells him Mr. Simons might fire him. Charlie says he's freaking out, that his wife is in her third trimester with their first child, saying he's got a lot on his hands. Next, Mr. Simons has summoned Josh to ask him to get the tenant Mr. Fitzhugh to leave. Josh goes to Fitzhugh who's got evicted and needs to leave since the banks are coming tomorrow. Fitzhugh says he used to work at Merrill Lynch, but since he lost all the investments he did for himself and his relatives, as well as lost his job, no one wants to help him. At first Josh tries to tell him he must leave, but feeling sorry for him, he eventually says they might be doing elevator maintenance tomorrow, saying he'll tell the bank they will just have to come back another time. Next, Josh sees Arthur has met Enrique and gets worried, telling Arthur that Enrique is early in the interviewing process. Arthur says he likes this guy, telling him to hire him full time. Josh tells Enrique to go down and get a name tag, making him happy. That evening, Lester tells Josh that this is going to be his last year at the tower before he retires. Josh gets shocked, but is glad for him and says he'll miss him. Next morning, Josh sees Slide yelling at a woman who's leaving him since another unknown woman seemed to know him all too well. Later, Lester and Josh remark that that car has been there for two days without getting any ticket. Men suddenly step out, and thinking it's a robbery, Josh tells Lester to lock the doors. He runs in yelling to the staff it's a code black. A woman asks what that means, and he asks if she's serious. They can't see the men, but then suddenly see how Arthur is being kidnapped. Josh yells it's a code black, but people just continue to ask what that means. He runs after the kidnappers across the streets, yelling stop. Suddenly, he's hit down by a woman telling him not to move, just as the truck rolls over. Josh tries to tell them Arthur was kidnapped and is the victim, but the woman called Agent Claire explains he was attempting to flee, confusing Josh. Next, media report that sources indicate Arthur is behind a fraud of epic proportions, and an immediate freeze of all his holdings has been ordered. Josh tells the staff that he's sorry, but that Arthur is on the board of the tower and was asked to manage all their pensions a few years ago to triple their portfolios, but that he's informed all people who invested with him have been defrauded, and more than likely it's all gone. The staff upset inquires who asked Arthur to invest their pensions, and Josh reveals it was himself. They ask Josh if Arthur got his money too, which he did. Next, Arthur has been released on a $10 million bail, on condition he remains under house arrest at his penthouse apartment. Agent Claire says this penthouse is now regarded as a maximum security prison, and the FBI has control of this floor. She asks what this is, and Arthur explains it's a 1963 Ferrari 250 GT Lusso, previously owned by Steve McQueen, saying he bought it once for $1 million, but wouldn't sell it for less than $10 million, explaining it was taken apart and reassembled to get it up here. Before they leave, Arthur asks Josh to bring his meals while he's stuck in his apartment, handing a tip, but Josh reminds him they don't take tips at the tower. Josh later asks Claire when they'll be able to get the money back, or if Arthur is even guilty. She replies she doesn't know, or whether there's any money to get back. He says he doesn't know what to tell his staff that are worried, and she replies he should tell them Arthur is guilty. On his way home, Josh hears how Slide is yelling this is police brutality, asking Josh to take a picture, but Josh just tries to get away. 
Later that evening, Lester stands up and walks towards the subway tracks. Josh is called on, and Charlie explains an off-duty cop pulled Lester back at the last second. Lester explains he gave Arthur all his life savings of $73,000 a couple months ago to invest it, saying he can't retire now. Josh promises him that Arthur will pay back every cent. Charlie stops him saying he can't go up there. Fitzhugh walks in, saying he's just been evicted, and his wife has taken his kids. Josh asks him since he's a Wall Street guy when Arthur realized it was over for him, and Fitzhugh says probably a year ago. Josh asks why one would take $73,000 two months ago, and Fitzhugh says it'd be to keep up his lavish appearance. Charlie lets him go up, and they tell the FBI agents they'll take Arthur's trash and breakfast order. Josh asks Arthur why he took Lester's money, and Arthur says it was a favor to invest his money. Charlie says Lester stepped in front of a subway train. Josh picks up a golf club, and Arthur tells him not to do something he can't undo, and Josh ignores him, asking if he even cares. Arthur says of course he cares and feels bad, to which Josh asks why he hasn't asked yet whether Lester is alive or dead, starting to hit the car. Arthur says the car is irreplaceable, and Josh remarks not like Dorman, which they make new of all the time. Josh remarks whoops, and the three leave. Next, Mr. Simons tells them he doesn't care how much Arthur has stolen, remarking they know he got murdered too by that son of a bitch, but says a line has been crossed and that they've all been fired. Josh says it was only his doing, but Mr. Simons doesn't care. Outside, Josh bids Miss Lovenko good luck on her bar test, and then says goodbye to the rest of the staff. Next, Josh thanks Claire for coming, saying he wants to help his staff get their money back, giving her Arthur's schedules, but she says they already got all that. She asks if he wants to get drunk, and next, the two somewhat drunk are having a friendly conversation. Suddenly, Claire says she probably shouldn't say this, but that Arthur has a safety net hidden somewhere, remarking he's taken out $20 million in cash and hidden it somewhere, something many rich guys do, but that them at FBI haven't found it yet. Josh is shocked, and as Claire leaves, he starts thinking. Next day, he goes to the tower to get one of his notebooks in his old office. He then goes to look at some safes, and after that, he walks around, finding Enrique, Charlie and Fitzhugh to gather them all and tell them of a job he's got for them. Josh explains Arthur bought a safe some years ago for his apartment, with $20 million in it. They ask how he knows, and Josh continues saying Arthur remodeled his apartment not long ago, taking down every wall, except one, which he left standing, remarking the FBI couldn't find any safe since it must be hidden in the wall. They get interested, and Josh asks if they will help him steal it. Enrique and Fitzhugh are in, but Charlie is uncertain, saying they don't know how to steal. Josh remarks he knows someone who does. Next, Slide is told he made bail, and Josh picks him up saying he must need a ride. Josh tries to connect with Slide, but Slide steps on the gas, asking who he is and what he wants. Josh yells they talk almost every morning, saying he needs his help. Slide asks why he'd help him since he doesn't know him, and Josh says they both went to Mrs. Salzburg for daycare, asking if he remembers the time a guy stole his inhaler and he couldn't breathe. Slide suddenly remarks he remembers him, calling him the seizure boy, who would start foaming up at the mouth. Josh says it was asthma, but Slide says it was definitely seizures, and they start arguing. Next, Josh has told him about the $20 million job, and they meet up to discuss a plan. Josh introduces Slide, saying Slide's been arrested several times and is totally qualified to help them. Next, Slide teaches them that situations can change quickly in robberies, saying that they'll have to freeze outside until they pick the lock and get in, saying he'll be inside with Rita in the meantime. Fitzhugh asks confused who Rita is. Next, Josh explains how they'll get past all cameras and patrolling security inside the tower. They then case the front of the building during lunch, but Fitzhugh says they can't afford it. Slide saying they can order whatever they want and picks up a plastic bag, saying lunch is on him. Josh says Enrique will override the elevator so they can get up to the penthouse. As they're planning how to get into the penthouse, suddenly Agent Claire knocks on the door, and everybody hides. Claire tells Josh the judge is gonna dismiss Arthur's case next week and will let Arthur walk, adding Arthur is threatening to press charges against him to answer for the Ferrari, but will let him go if he gives a sincere apology. Next, Arthur tells Josh about the greatest move in the history of chess, how a man named Frank was losing against a man called Levitsky in 1912 and how it seemed like Frank was going to lose, until he deliberately sacrificed his queen. The move was very shocking, and two moves later, Frank won. Josh gives his apology, and Arthur remarks he hopes he goes back home and studies chess. Josh says he'll study the Frank Levitsky match, and Arthur adds everybody can sacrifice their queen, the trick is to get away with it. Claire gives him a ride home, and gives him footage of him destroying Arthur's car, 
saying she loved that move. Before leaving, he asks her out on Saturday night, which she accepts. As he gets inside, his companions get upset he'll date an FBI agent and they start discussing. But soon after, Slide says they've got a big problem regarding the safe. He says he's never worked a safe like this before, asking if any of them know anyone who's got an actual safecracker history. Josh gets an idea, and next, they've invited Odessa, who's working at the tower, and Josh remarks he noted her father was a locksmith when he hired her, asking if she can pick locks. She says it depends, and they show her a copy of Arthur's safe. Odessa remarks that that safe's got a very tricky spindle, that it'll probably take her 15 minutes to open. They ask if she can show them, and she does, and later, Slide wants to learn how to open it, so she teaches him, remarking first you must find the entry point, and you find it using your fingers, popping the question if he's married. Next day, Josh and Fitzhugh see Charlie going into the tower. Later, Josh stops him outside, and Charlie explains Mr. Simons rehired him, but as the building's new manager. Charlie warns him not to continue with their plan, saying if they come near the tower he'll stop them, since he needs the job for his family. Next, Agent Claire is summoned and told that Arthur's court date is moved to Thanksgiving, and that Arthur will press charges against Josh and the others anyway, despite Josh's apology. She calls Josh, saying Arthur's court date has been moved to Thanksgiving and that Arthur's pressing charges and will have him in jail before the weekend, and Josh replies that messes up their date. Josh remarks their plan worked. Next is Thanksgiving, and Josh tells Enrique to find Charlie's wife to nick her phone, who's going to her uncle by train. Preparations are done for the Thanksgiving parade later, and Charlie prepares the staff at the tower. Enrique manages to find Charlie's wife, and takes her phone. Meanwhile, Arthur is led out of his penthouse to be taken to the courthouse. Enrique gets back with the phone, and suddenly Josh sees Slide has stolen his suit and is going to the tower. Fitzhugh remarks that's not the plan, and Josh says he thinks Slide is going to try to steal the money himself, having spent so much time with Odessa that he can open the safe. They ask what they're going to do, and Josh says they'll follow the plan and go on Snoopy. Moments later, one of the security guys finds a Playboy magazine in their inbox, and suddenly Josh gets a message from his wife that the baby is coming now, and he asks a woman to cover for him. The three begin the plan, and just as the staff comes to see Snoopy, they sneak in. Meanwhile, Slide tricks Mr. Simons he's there on behalf of the bank to check on the remodeling of Fitzhugh's old apartment, asking if he can see it. Odessa creates a distraction, starting to sing happy birthday for someone. The trio get past the security guards, but remarked they should have been in that elevator that Mr. Simons is stepping into, and they have to take the stairs. In Fitzhugh's old apartment, Slide tricks Mr. Simons into a closet, locking him inside. Odessa gets to the penthouse, offering cake to the FBI agent, but who's allergic to chocolate, and so she improvises. Slide steps into the elevator, just as the trio switches the elevator off, and he has to get up and out, and then start climbing in the shaft. The trio gets to the penthouse, blocking all cameras, and then starts searching for the safe. Suddenly, Josh hears a place where the walls hollow. They start hammering, getting excited, but suddenly Slide appears. Slide tells them to move aside, but Josh says no. They start arguing, calling each other stuff, and suddenly Odessa appears with her own gun, screaming at him to drop it. Fitzhugh takes Slide's gun and gets hysterical and angry, all while Odessa works her magic. At the courthouse, Arthur remarks he's still deciding whether to go after Agent Claire's badge. They are told the courthouse is closed and that there's no judge there today. They quickly get back into the car. Charlie returns to the tower, remarking his wife wasn't at the hospital, that she is at her uncle's house. He quickly gets to the security room, asking if they've seen Josh, which they haven't. Opening the safe, they find it's totally empty. Slide says he'll get out of there, trying to take his gun back, and a shot goes off, hitting the car. Josh goes up to inspect, seeing there's gold underneath the paint. He starts investigating, remarking the whole car is made out of gold. Fitzhugh starts calculating how much it's worth on the market right now, calculating it's worth $45 million, give or take $10 million. They start discussing how to get it out of there, and Josh gets an idea. Enrique runs up on the roof to lower the crane for window maintenance. They lift off a glass pane, and Fitzhugh remarks this is crazy. Claire tells Arthur she thinks he's being robbed since somebody definitely wants him out of his apartment. They hook the car onto the lift, and push it outside of the window. Enrique starts lowering the car to a lower floor where Fitzhugh is waiting. Suddenly, the FBI agent starts waking up. Josh tells Fitzhugh to pull the car in, but Fitzhugh starts having second thoughts, saying he wants to go home now. They remark they need to get down there, but hear the FBI agent trying to get in. Fitzhugh tries to gather his courage, all while Josh and Slide start climbing down the crane cable. 
Fitzhugh manages to reach the car, but then loses contact with the floor. He cries for help, but they tell him his only chance is to reach for the rope and climb back in. He tries, but loses his grip, and luckily Charlie catches him, having found them. Josh and Slide climbs into the car, and they get the idea that they can swing the car closer so they can hook it. The agents reach a road stop, and a cop tells them they'll have to go around the whole park. They manage to hook the car, and Enrique quickly lowers the car as they reel the car in. Charlie gets angry, telling Josh he's ruined his life, just for stealing a car. They tell him it's made out of gold and is worth $45 million, and he changes his attitude. They ask themselves how to get the car into the elevator, and Charlie remarks it doesn't have to. Enrique runs to lower the elevator to just under their floor. Searching for keys, Josh finds a ledger inside the car. Suddenly, an old woman comes out, asking Charlie to give her dog some treats that he keeps on his desk, which he says he will. They roll the car into the elevator, and meanwhile outside, Claire arrives with the agents, starting to rush back into the tower. They balance the car in the elevator, just as Enrique says security has overruled him, and it starts going down. The dog falls in, which Josh catches. They reach the lobby, and the agents step in. As they start going up, they see the top and get scared the car will not fit, but they're lucky. The agents step off. Josh asks Slide where he left the truck, after which he calls Lester, saying there's a slight change of plans, that he gotta get the truck and back it up to the elevator. Inside the apartment, they're surprised the car is gone, but then Claire remarks he neglected to report there was a safe in his apartment, saying he just forfeited his $10 million bail. Arthur tells her if they let that car leave the building she'll lose a lot more. They quickly go down to the security room, and Claire sees they got the car. Lester starts driving the truck quickly through the parade, and is followed by the agents. But as he turns left onto a new street, he's stopped by cops meeting him. Seeing there's nobody inside, Claire asks Lester where the others are, but he just replies he tried to commit suicide. Next, the whole team are arrested by the FBI for being suspected to have stolen the car. Enrique tries to flee, and as Claire arrests Josh, she tells him his whole plan was really smart. Inside a truck, Arthur tells them he'll be back in his penthouse in a couple days, and will make sure they all go to prison for a long time. Josh agrees they might go to jail a few years, but remarks he'll go to prison for the rest of his life, saying they found his ledger. Arthur asks what he thinks he's doing, and Josh replies he's sacrificing his queen. Arthur starts bribing them, saying he can make them 10 times what that car is worth if they do as he says. But then Enrique reminds him they don't accept tips at the tower, and Josh says checkmate. Meanwhile, Mr. Simons is screaming for help. At the FBI, Miss Lovenko suddenly arrives, saying she'll represent all the defendants, having passed the bar three days ago, saying she demands the immediate release of all the defendants, picking out the ledger. They say it contains Arthur's handwritten notes detailing his fraudulent business practices, and will give it to them if they let them go. The man says he'll let them all go but Josh, who'll get two years prison, and they accept. Next, Slide says let's do this, and Odessa yells hallelujah. Somewhere, Charlie's with his wife and baby, and somewhere else, Arthur is welcome to his new penthouse. A few days later, the employees at the tower receive packages, and when they open them, they watch with surprise and happiness parts from a car, fully made out of solid gold. And lastly somewhere else, Josh has a smile on his face. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.